Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael Craig. Kids call me Rue. Thanks for being on Rue Doodles Live. It's December the 16th, uh, bright and early here on the East Coast. I'm not really on the East Coast. That's, um, I'm only several hours from it, but uh, I'm in the East anyway. And so glad you're here. Southeastern time is basically what I mean there. Good to have you here. It's uh, it's the 16th of December. It's close to Christmas time. And, uh, and so... Um, I've been painting, but I've been busy as ever, which is, um, you know, you don't expect it, but when you do what I do, which is, I'm not sure what that is, it's always fun to just sort of uh, see what comes next. And so uh, there's never been a uh, uh, too much of a lag between uh, what happens here and there. And so, um, hang on one second here. Um, gosh, I should have probably gotten a brush before I got up, maybe. But we'll see. We'll just see how this works out here in a second. A little picture to picture there, and it won't be as bad. I'm uh, throwing a little uh, lotion on my hands here for a second because they just feel so dried out. I've been welding this week. And um, so um, this will this will help uh, just loosen them up. Got a couple little nicks. Um, worked worked with a project. I'm going to show you a video that I worked with a project on some razor wire and um, on this prison project that I've been working on. And um, it, it, it's, I'll tell you more about the story later, but uh, I, I really didn't get cut by it. This was, I, the plier slipped and I pinched a blood blister on my finger. <laughs> you think like, well, duh, you could have done that anywhere. Okay, that's good lotion. I probably better put this on my Santa list here. This is um, Leoctane. There it is, Leocetane, I think. I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. It's in Provence, it's from France. And it's Vervina. It's uh, man. It is some cool smelling stuff. I'm into citrus, so that's that's going to be good. So uh, let me say hello here, and it's uh, show time. Boom! There it is. This became the face on my apron. And by the way, um, those aprons will certainly be out after the first of the year with uh, pen prints. That's P E N N P R I N T S. Um, Ink dot shop, and that's going to be your pinprints dot shop. I'll I'll look it up and put a, put a link. But it's uh, who some of you got the Christmas ornament from, and uh, this is on uh, this is one of my favorite uh, rooster heads. It's on a tea towel I have over there, but it's also uh, on the front of my apron. And man, I I love it already. That and the big B, and so uh, um, 
Penny and Gary and those guys down there, Ken, they're working on, I think they're, we're going to do a Christmas, we're going to do a, an art apron too. And it'll, it'll be a little more expensive material uh, because I want this thing to, uh, I want you to put your hands on it and just, you know, just have some paint and colors on it. It's probably going to be a darker color. It may not be a white apron. It might be a, might be a dark apron. And, uh, but I don't know. It's kind of fun sometimes just to rub your hands on a white shirt. That's why I wear them. And so, um, anyway, uh, but it's showtime. Let me say hello to some of you, and then I'll just get to painting this morning. i got a couple projects I want to knock out uh, before I hit the road. Pat Brooks, hello to you, my dear friend. Pat, I want to say thank you. I uh, enjoyed my card, and I actually, <laughs> I love this encouragement. And I've just, um, and you know what blew my mind about this little feather, Pat, is that the fact that you made this little twisted wire. And I don't know if you worked under a magnifying glass or not, but the fact that you put it on this little piece of wire, <laughs> And this looks like a uh, maybe a parrot feather, which is kind of fun. Um, I have a friend who's just written a book. Uh, it's called Theo Golden. And uh, a lady who's a homeless lady in the book, uh, one of his characters, uh, she makes these blocks of wood that hold feathers. And, and uh, they're, my friend is making them available. It's really kind of a fun story. Um, I love it. So thank you very much. Pat's creative person who also uh, did all the illustrations for Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. And listen, if you got grandkids and you want them to think about a simple, fun way to look at art, uh, I'm going to encourage you to just buy the book. It's called Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. Um, I usually have some line up here and to, that I talk about, but I've moved my books around um, this week because I'm trying to make room in my studio for... Um, a train to run through. I'm just kidding. And, and uh, what's such a bad marketing guy that I am? Um, anyway, I hit a paint today. So this is a Saturday before I hit the road. And I want to paint a little bit. But it's called Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. You get it on Amazon. And uh, Pat did the artwork in there. And she just kind of went with how her mind's gone and uh, uh, how her mind goes. <laughs> and I just loved it. You know, I just said, look, don't make these too elaborate. Make them loose and just let them be your characters that tell the story. And so, you know, there's certain things that I tell my grandkids and it's in there. Uh, when you sketch, you should you should sketch across the paper with your pencil like a skater on thin ice. And so she has this pencil going across the ice and so it's just the little sayings that i did when i first started uh, the live stream and uh, i still say those things i say it every week i told a group of men this week they said oh did you build this you're an artist i said no but i think like one and so i constantly use that statement that uh, has become a part of Rude doodles now um it's even on a coffee cup that i really love um i will show you that that's kind of fun uh it's on this coffee cup right here with this wild hair roux. Huh, wonder where that came from, huh? All right, so there it is right there. It says, think like an artist. Um, and this is probably not focused on it, so it's down here. So there it is. It says, think like an artist, think like an artist. And then this is the other cup that I did. These are on my Rudoodles Etsy site. This is called the Swarm. And uh, um, these are a lot of the bees. All these bees were one of the numbered bees that are out there somewhere. I'm still, I'm at 1,000. 100 and I think I'm at 49 or maybe 50. Maybe it'll be 51 this week. I'm going to try to paint some more uh, through the rest of the month uh, leading into January. And just if I can get up to like 12 or 1300. So I'm really loving how they're turning out. But as you can see, um, it's really been fun to paint some of these. So uh, that's how that flies. No pun intended there. All right, let's do this. I've got some Kilimanjaro paper here. I started saying hello, Karen. I didn't get past Pat. So, hey, Pat, Karen Bender, Binder, Sender, Sander, Gene Anthalzer, love to have you on the show. Karen Pikert, uh, Lynn Schleitning, always good to hear from you. Donna Cell Barton, love your creative brain. Denise Albright, she made it, she says. <laughs> I love it. Uh, June Jones is on this morning, and I uh, love that. Chris Whitaker, love your art. Uh, Alice Durham, uh, Greenville, I believe. Beverly Schmidt, Greenville. Is that true? Both of y'all are from uh, the same. Dorothy Beasley. Um, there's some North Carolina people on here. I love it. Uh, Linda Lidhart from Orlando. Let's see. Marlena Davis, Deborah Spangler. When did you start the B count? I started the B count. That's a good question. I started the B count in April of uh, 22. And I didn't know how long it would take me to get to a thousand. And it took me until September of this year, I think, 
to reach a thousand. Um, and, and I'm really happy with some of the bees. These bees, some of these are numbered. Some I've got uh, numbers on the back, but here's 966. Um, here is 1037. Uh, these are two bees that are on the cup. I think this is uh, 34, 35. Uh, here's 978, 979. These bees will eventually sell somewhere. So there's some of the bees that, that I just keep painting that I haven't even put out there yet. And I will eventually sell some more, but I um, these bees made it to the cup. <laughs> and so uh, you know why I started doing that? I started doing the bees just because it was a, a running joke that if you want to learn how to paint a bicycle, you paint 50 bicycles. And I thought um, I was in Hilton Head. My, uh, we had lost a friend and we went down to spend some time and say hello and take his, his uh, widowed wife out to dinner. And um, they're bluffed, but we went on into Hilton Head. And so they were going through some shops, Carol and her friend. And I just sat down in the rocking chair, took my little pad of paper that I have at the time and uh, opened it up. This is where I keep my little uh, Kilimanjaro paper down in here, the cut pieces that I travel with. And my, this goes into my jacket, in my, in my dinner jacket, my church jacket, my whatever jacket, usually inside this vest that I wear with all the pins and um and so i'm sitting there and i'm painting a bee and i had another bee and carol just walked out and she just looked down and she said how many bees are you gonna paint and i said two thousand and she went and i said that's all i took that's all it took i said yes i am and so i publicly spoke it and sometimes i do that as my not as my accountability group because it's not really anything to anybody but when i publicly declare it sometimes it puts a little bit of pressure on me to say um i think i'm going to stick to it and that's what i've done and so i'm going to still go for 2000 it's a fun goal and so having that goal uh, if God keeps me on this planet long enough i'm going to do 2000 bees now i've painted probably another three or 400 bees even before I started the count. But there was a point where I said, I can't go back and guess how many I painted, so I'm just going to start fresh. So from April of 22, 23, yeah, of April 22 is when I started. Okay, so there you go. There's the answer to that question. Brevard, North Carolina, Sandra Stone. All right. Uh, I have a granddaughter in Brevard today at a Young Life property. Irene Shraz, thank you for being on the show. Maggie Carnahan. Fern Skelly, thank you. Mickey Hupp, Fern, I appreciated your note that you got uh, uh, your glasses. Uh, she bought some glasses from uh, Rue. It's, it's been fun to adapt and, and move my product out a little bit. It really has. And I fought myself over that. Nobody else had some friends who were encouraged me to do it and say, look, people want some of your artwork and they want some of your goofy stuff that they can have. And, and I got to tell you, um, made me happy that uh, my friend Will uh, at, uh, ordered two of these mugs and they were shipped out to um, you know, I don't see this stuff, so it just goes, but, um, uh, with, with grit. And I thought, how fun is that, that, uh, you know, that they've encouraged me to keep painting roosters. In fact, they've just sent me their new January list and I got to get creative and paint a painting for the grit magazine in January. All right, here we go. A few minutes after nine, let me roll this. Um, Hey, I'm going to start off uh, just a little bit uh, like an artist here and let you see something while I get my act together. And here it is. Um, no, you know what? I'm just going to wait. Uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to Mary and uh, uh, Carol Marie Joby Goins. There you go. Woohoo! And Randall Taylor Craven just showed up. Better late than never? Well, of course it is with you. Thank you that you're here. Um, let me say a couple more things about paper before I start. I got two different kinds here lying on the table this morning. And let's do this. Here we go. All right. Looks like Jason Nicholas might be on the program. This is the Kilimanjaro paper that I use 98% of the time. All right. And speaking of Kilimanjaro, it comes from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. And, um, and my friend Megan... Um, Williams Miller posted a note to me this morning and said, don't forget, she didn't tell me to do this. I'm doing this on my own. Canuga uh, Water Media Workshops are coming up. And um, I'm telling you, that's the one that I was able to go and be a part of last year and instruct, had a small class there, uh, had a life-changing event there, whereas a lady in my class named Raisin, Nancy Carter was her name, um, 
and may her family be well because she's resting in peace. Trust me. She had a, a, a very severe cancer even at the time. Came in with just the craziest red wig on you've ever seen. Next day, I think it was another color. Next day, it was bound up. And one day, she just said, I'm without it. I got on my crazy do-rag and hat. The woman was a stitch. Funny, creative, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant photographer, brilliant artist. Uh, we wanted to write a children's book. She sent me the script and I got to go through it and just uh, suggest a little poet cut word here or there, not editing. There's no way I would edit anybody's book, but it was sort of fun to go through that and just read it and get it into the rhythm that I felt like she was trying to say to make the words go the way they should go. And it was, and it was just fun. And, and then she, she started drawing honeybees and she did a whole little bee painting that she sent me a picture of. It's just hilarious. And she went home to be with Jesus uh, earlier this year. And, uh, and I got to talk to her daughter on the phone and another friend, and they published a book for her. And it's not a small book, and it's about a frog that to, uh, lives to dance. Uh, he doesn't live to be a part of the choir. He's a dancer. He's a Lord leaps a lot, I think is his name. Anyway, great story. So th at this water, uh, Canuga water media workshop, there's just some great community that happens for artists. And look, it's not the most inexpensive thing you'll ever do. Um, but I'm just going to tell you, you get to hang out six days with artists and you get demonstrations every night and you get to be in a class and you get to be pushed. So if you want something like that, I just want to make it known to you. You can find it through Cheap Joe's Art Stuff or Canuga. The word is K-A-N-U-G-A -A, and that's a region. So, um, there you go. All right, Kathy McCreary, thanks for being on the show. Um, all right, here we go. So, so what I do is I love this paper. Uh, but you know, there's there, there's these little fly leaves in between, right? They call it what do they call it? They call it uh, twenty sheets. Ah, there's a little word in here they call it. I don't remember what they call it, but it's kind of a little uh, overleaf sketch paper. I don't tear those out. I just leave them. They're just really thin. I love painting on them sometimes because it gives me a completely. Chris Whitaker, you probably have this paper. You love you love hot press slick paper. This is like hotter and slicker than you ever painted on a fly. I can't light on this, but I love painting my crazy little fishing flies on it. And then, of course, I did this one the other day. These are my at the breakfast table in the morning when I come down and have a little hot tea and waiting on something that I'm uh, Carol's fixing or I'm fixing. I'll uh, um, this morning I had uh, cherry pie for breakfast because it was there and I thought I should eat a piece of that cherry pie. Um, I don't want it to go to waste. I hate to throw pie out. And uh, it's, it's fun. And so this is, look, it's fun to stay at the YMC. Stop singing. Stop singing. Bobby's in the trap. I've painted this a couple times before, but I wanted to just see it on this uh, little paper. And uh, this is beautiful stuff. Um, yeah, chip first is I had a 300 pound paper. You know, there's 300 pound on this. Look at this. Learn the difference between 140 pound right here and this 300 GSM. It's the same thing, but sometimes if you get 300 as the first number, unless you love to just paint on 300 pound paper, and I'm telling you, it takes some serious water. They send you a sample piece in the beginning. So here's the fly sheet. Here's the YMCA painting. Here's a little... Uh, Monet, what's that old joke? Uh, the reason I'm always Baroque is because someone took my Monet. And so uh, there's the uh, little painting that I did that's just uh, my own version of just a lily pad. And I, I literally just put some bamboo. By the way, there's tons of bamboo in there. Monet loved uh, the Asian style. So he did a lot of things in Asian style. And so there's all kinds of bamboo around his Japanese bridge that's right up here where Carol did the splits. Uh, this is just a different slick roux I did on this paper. It says, oh, no, I'm different. And the little bee says, and that's good. And so um, this is really some fun paper. And I love just painting on it very quickly. I wanted to show you that today. So don't just rip these out and think, oh, that's just a cover page. Paint on this. Here's why. It will challenge you for the use of water and the style of paint. You're going to get a lot more uh, fumato. You're going to get a lot more mushroom blending and uh and bleed as it comes through and I'm, in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna do one of those for you on a little different kind of paper and just show you in fact i'll do this one right here i'll, I'll do this little roux on some different paper this is the paper that joe gave me a couple years ago before he passed on 
Uh, and he took some of this paper. He showed me his journals. He took me this. Uh, he he gave me uh, this. He gave me this pad of B paper, and um, I was going to take it to Maine with me. That's why he gave it to me for. And I started using it in the studio a little bit. And I like it. it's only uh, ninety three pound, and it's pretty slick. But I want to show you what it does with color. And uh, it's it's a little natural. It's natural white. It's not bright white. Um, I'm going to use a flare pen on it this morning for, for all you architects in the crowd. Um, yeah, Jason says 300 pounds, definitely a learning quirk. You bet, man. You you have to almost use a, a, a snow plow behind the paint to get it to, to run out. So here's uh, that little painting that I did. Um, here's a version of that. This is this. Yeah, this, this, this flare looks like it works. This flare's got some miles on it, probably about 40, 40 years worth of miles on it. But here we go. I'm, I'm just going to do what I call my little um, color roux. And he's he's a little kind of, kind of um, what's the word? Um, uh, ge geometrically uh, challenged. He, he doesn't look like he's got round corners. He looks like he's got kind of square corners and triangles. And I, I do like this. Um, rooster for this reason and I'm going to put his foot down here like this I'm going to put your foot down and put this one in here and then I'll probably come over here and come down with this one and run it down this way like this and put this one out that way so that looks like he's sort of like um, splayed out there a little bit like standing on an icy driveway um, and so that gives you just a little idea of what I've done I'm going to come in here and just put some little bit of this um, it almost looks like a Holstein calf, doesn't he? Yeah, I got those little Holstein cow marks in there. All right, I'm going to grab some paint here and um, see if I could just get a little bit of, uh, let me get this wet just a little bit. Here's my paint. Here's my water. I'm going to take it over here and just give it a little bit of a, just give it a little bit of a spray with this mister, just spraying in there like that. I didn't want to spray it right on my painting this morning. And I'm going to grab a pretty heavy brush. I'm going to grab a big brush. I'm going to grab a number six. That's not big. I'm going to grab a number six um, pseudo sable brush, okay? And, uh, and then I'm just going to go in here, and I'm just going to let this brush pick up on my felt tip pen. See that? It's beginning to come in. All right. Uh, we'll play that music again. I liked it. All right. I listened to some old school music this week. My granddaughter and I uh, drove uh, about an hour and a half north. A little project we had to do for um, a video. She's shooting video for me some. And uh, right now, before she heads off to college next year, she's in her gap year this year. And uh, wants to go into photography, so we're giving her some actual hands-on style and skill so there's there's that uh, paper you see how it's already beginning to run a little bit i'm just grabbing this in here keeping this pretty wet just like that um i want some of this spring green every now and then i just grab my brush and just don't really shake the water out of it just let it splash like crazy how about a little um, pumpkin orange right in there? I don't like pumpkins. I don't like Halloween, but I'd rather it be cad of some sort. So, uh, all right, a little bit of red down here under this too. Maybe a little purple. This this is the rue that I thought of of being different. Um, and and I'll, I'll sh I'm going to show you a video in a minute that'll show you how different that I think. Um, what brought me to this whole thought process? This is how your brain works. I was driving home late the other night from a project, and uh, I was coming down back roads off of, uh, up in North Carolina, uh, out of a little town called Anson County, and uh, it's a good place to go get some grits every now and then. But I was up there at the correctional facility. <laughs> um, I, I was there as a guest, <laughs> uh, not as a guest of the state, but uh, I did talk to uh, quite a few inmates. Had some great conversations, and uh, we talked about artists. I talked to two tattoo artists, and uh, 
they were fascinating. And I said, well, it's against the law to have those things in. And they go, well, of course it is, but we've got it. We broke the law to get in here. <laughs> and great wit, great sense of humor. One guy had been there 37 years and one guy 31 years. And uh, they now have a little bit of trust so they could come over and help us on the project we were working on. And so uh, you can tell how they're dressed depending on it, green khakis or green pants or or, you know, if you're in orange pants, no, but it, it, your maximum security. And so they're in a work detail. And so they could come over and help us some. And just fascinating men who are looking to get their map, they call it, to uh, get an off ramp to get out of there. And uh, so I've got a couple guys that I added to my wall prayer list up here, which is kind of fun. And that's that's cool. A guy named Wolf. He asked me what my name was. And I said, well, it's um, my name's actually Michael, but my grandkids call me Rue. And one of the gentlemen there, uh, Mateo, um, didn't speak English. And so I said, um, Pulio or Gallo? And he goes, Gallo. You know, I said, oh, Gallo. Okay. So uh, he says, you, Mr. Gallo. And I said, no, Mr. To it, just Gallo. So it was it was a, just a fun thing. Do you, see, you feel what I'm feeling here? Why I, I could call this be a little different? So I'm meeting with these guys and I'm talking about... Uh, art and they had taken a spring and a ballpoint pen thing and sharpened the end of it and a little battery and some wires and made a coil and they made themselves a little tattoo gun and they give each other tattoos and uh, I said well you guys are sketch artists for heaven's sakes and their artwork was over the top and uh, I'm going like who who does this and he goes People who have too much time on their hands. <laughs> I'm going like, oh my gosh. Anyway, you know, when you just go in and you treat people like people, um, uh, and their lives are uh, their lives are changed, and and they wish dearly that they had made de different choices and uh, for themselves and their families, and so they have a great story to tell, but it's fascinating. All right, okay. Um, Creativity has no boundaries. Yeah, you're right about that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what I built for them in just a minute. I've got a video of it. So the reason I painted this is because uh, I wanted a rue that was really different because this is, they kept saying, um, you're, you're different. And I don't know if they meant differently from society or differently than themselves or differently from other people who come there and feel like I have to be careful and I don't trust you. And I mean, I hugged two of the guys and we shook hands. And um, one of them, I came back and I stopped by this little gas station and I smell, it smelled like fried everything in there. And I went in and I mean, I'm way up in the Eastern part of North Carolina and I go like, what is this? And he goes like, we got the best fried chicken strips and okra you've ever had. So make me some. So I went back to Mateo and I go, Gallo, <laughs> fried, and he goes ah. Oh. So I so I share this with those guys, and and anyway, they're going like, but I'm going like uh, here. And I gave them napkins because they've been out working with me on the project, and then they came in to see the project that I was working on, and uh, and they immediately were drawn to it. And I didn't video them, but when you see it, you'll know why they were drawn to it. They couldn't get over the material that I had taken and made it into something else. And that's what fascinates people sometimes about art. Are you hearing me here? Sometimes, I've told you this joke before, but I'm gonna tell it to you to make a point again. Two men walking down the street. One of them is eating a banana. The other one is walking behind, just enjoying the day. He's looking around. He's He's three steps behind, four steps behind. The other man in front is just eating this banana. Mmm, loves it. Nothing like good potassium in the morning with a good firm banana. No mushy bananas. Give me those bananas that have a little green on them that make, you, make your jaw right here just kind of cringe a little bit. They're eating this banana. He's eating a banana and he goes like this. He finishes the banana and you see him throw the banana peel over his shoulder. Could have hit a trash can, but no. You know, it's in the 30s. They're dressed. The guy's on a bowler hat. And, and it's very Charlie Chaplin-esque. So they're walking down. And and he throws the banana over his shoulder. And the camera pulls back. And you see the second guy not paying attention, just wandering around. you realize he's going to step on the banana peel. And shoo, pow. And that'll be the pratfall in this sketch. 
At the last minute in Charlie Chaplin style, he sees it and he pulls up short. And he looks over and he jumps over it. But when he does, he goes down a manhole. That's misdirection. That's humor. Do you see that? Sometimes in your art, and, and this is the stuff that I'm going to start doing at the, after the first of the year. My Patreon people know that Patreon is shutting down. All the folks that have been a part of that and who have supported me, we're shutting that down. But I'm going to start doing some at what I call Rue 857s. And it's eight minutes and 57 seconds. I'm going to throw them out on my Facebook page. I'm going to throw them out on YouTube. They're just ideas that I come up with that make you think a little differently. Okay? Make you think like an artist that make you think, hey, what if it was just a little bit different? And so when I see a painting like this, or when I do something like this, and I doodle it on this flypaper, and it says, oh, no, I'm different, somebody in your world needs to say, and don't forget it, that's so good. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And so that's kind of the concept that I'm after here when, when uh, I do a painting like this. Now, well, the reason I did it on this 93-pound slick B paper is because I wanted to get these little fumadas in here. I wanted to get these little mushroom effects. Can I get more of those? You bet I can. I can take some purple and drop a spot of it right there. I can take a little bit of it right here. I can take another little spot of maybe some of this beautiful orange and just put it now right here. So it just lines the edge or up here, and I want a little more. And I might just bring a couple out there like that. Uh, I do want a little different green right in here, just at the base of this, this fit. yellow green. I think this is called uh, green gold. I believe that's what this paint's called that I'm using right here. I know it is. It's called green gold. And so it's got a little yellow in it, and uh, it's really kind of a nice little barn, ugly red um you know, the thing about painting roosters is uh, my colors can just be barn colors. They don't have to be spectacular. They just have to be whatever I want them to be. And so that's kind of what this was. There's some beauty marks, just some red beauty marks. <laughs> and then um, don't you just love it when um, a plan comes together like this and you put some pen in there if you want to. And, and so... Um, Put a little detail on it, and then uh, he's called to be different, and he is. And this is going to fuzz out a little bit. If it doesn't, I'm going to put some more water with it and fuzz it out. So you just like this. I'm just going to break it and put the water there. And then I'm going to let that dry. I'll show it to you in a minute if I can. Um, and then I'm going to switch paintings for you in the next half hour. But I'm going to show you a video first, okay? Pat says, we are each unique, and we should celebrate that fact. You bet. And... Um, Skeeter Pal says, talking about my friends. You bet, Ke uh, Skeeter. Skeeter's uh, dear friends in David's table are different people to be loved. They think differently. They act differently. They are differently. And then what happens is we don't know how to respond to them. I'll tell you how you respond to them. The same way I responded to the incarcerated men that I was with this week. You just treat them like human beings. And you just laugh with them and you love with them, and you don't worry about protecting your language too much about, oh, I'm this or that, or worry about this. You just say, hey, man, what's on your brain? What can I do? Let's go have a cup of coffee. Let's sit down here. And they just, they all came out when they were getting back into their vehicle and go back to their locked up fences. They all, one guy shook my hand, and I thought he was going to break it. Because we had a friend on the set who's who's a big farm. He's a farmer from South Dakota, and his hands make mine look small. And I went, Daryl, your hands are the biggest hands of any man. They said, Oh no, wait, do you see Bo? And this dude comes over, and I mean, it's like, whoa. And so, uh, you know, these guys have had a, a bad past. And uh, we want to help them have a better future. And so it's kind of fun. So what I did was there's an event coming off tonight and they needed a light for the event. And a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, uh, as I was walking through this project for five and two, five and two comes from a biblical story, five fish and two loaves of bread, where it's a parable. It's in, it's, it's not really a parable. It's a story. Jesus is speaking on the sea of Galilee and people are all surrounded. And he says to his disciples, Hey, we got to feed these people. And they go like, we don't have, what are you talking about? Feed these people. There's no McDonald's close by. And, and I don't think that's, that's what was said, but I'm paraphrasing. And, and he said, well, um, 
see if there's any, any can you rustle up anything? To, uh, Andrew, take a look over here. See, he goes, you realize how much money it's going to take to feed this crowd? It said there was 5,000 men. That means there was women and children. Some people say there was many as eight to 12,000 people there. And you're going like, whoa, how are you going to feed eight to 12,000 people? And, and this little boy says, I'll help. And he comes up and he's got in his bag, a little basket, and he's got five uh, fish and two loaves of bread. And, and he goes, and, and God in his creative way says, no, do it. Jesus says that. And so he goes, uh, here, break all this up in pieces and distribute it. And they're going like, sure. Five and two, whatever little you have, you give and watch what happens to it. So as we were walking through it, I was hearing this story. There's a little bit in the narration. I took some of the narration out. I sent them the longer version. I just happened to set up a couple of cameras or, and while I was building this to just so people could go, you did what? And so as I was walking through, I saw the razor wire on top of the fence. This is what you see when the camera comes in on a, on a prison in movies. It is treacherous stuff. It's just horrible. And so I looked at it, though, and as I came around, the sun was right in, coming across this way, and it was hitting the razor wire, and just like little mirrors were going, blah, 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 blah. And I said, um, well, you ought to save me some of that when you guys turn this into a school, and uh, I'll make a light out of it. And I, think, and I think I was just being kind of facetious, but I was thinking differently. I was thinking like an artist. A year and a half passed, and I got a call two weeks ago that said, could you do that light you were talking about? And I went, uh, what light's that? And he said, you know, when we were up at Salisbury and we were in the prison there, you said, save you some of that uh, concertina wire. It's called concertina wire because it's accordion, whoa, whoa, whoa. razor wire that's responded to. Every man that I talked to and the 10 or 12 um, people who came by, the men who are incarcerated there, the men who are on the work detail, they came in. And they all stopped and said, oh, my gosh, what have you done? And one guy just goes, I, I don't, I can't get it. I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. And everybody else went, I get it. I get it. Here's the story, okay? I first heard about the five and two trade school. We were walking inside the prison walls. It's a strange feeling. I saw the locks, the bars, and on the way in, the concertina wire. You may know it as razor wire. It says, stop. It's very analog. It's a device, a mechanism that says, not welcome to go here. You are a prisoner. You're not free. As I walked the grounds and considered the new use of this physical plant, a trade school, the wire began to take on a different quality to me. It had this amazing reflective quality, dangerous but bright, the elements that good stories are made of. The analogy that came to me was this comparison of a dark wire that shines. I honestly said this in passing. You should save me some of that wire when the fences come down and I could make a chandelier from it. I'm not sure if I really meant it, but I just said it would certainly be different and then Driving home, I thought, aren't we called to be different? Then comes the allegory, a story to make sense of this upside down world. And then five and two, this upside down world of Jesus. There's an analog story, a basket filled with limited food, but Jesus turns it on its head. Dark to light is the narrative of this story. How can people make a difference? Walk in the light. Dark says, you are a prisoner. God says, you are free. Come here. He is the light. I actually showed you the longer version. I was going to show you the shorter version. It was analog. And I uh, toyed with these words this week. Analog. What is analog? Analog is something physical that we really can see. And and we, uh, we learn to do something with it. Analog is a piece of wire. Okay? Analog is a piece of wire. Analogy is when I take that wire and say this wire could have current running through it. Or I could twist it and make it look like something else. An allegorical part of this, and my friend Chip Fur, who loves, he and I talk about analogies and, and um, analog. We talk about analogies and allegory a lot. 
uh, in storytelling. And so the 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 so there's analog for me is that rough cut hazardous wire that means stop. Uh, then there's then there's this analogy of what if that light was shiny in some way and people looked at it differently. And then there's the allegorical part of a story. Whoa, what if this is what people need to do is be from dark to light? You see the switch? And that's what makes you different when you're in the grocery store, when you're in the neighborhood, when you're in the pop-up shop and you're selling your art and you give someone a piece of art, when you write a card and say, thank you, when you write a card that says happy birthday, when you when you hug someone who isn't used to being hugged, when you give a Christmas gift that no one expects. You are flipping a switch somewhere, somehow, some way. Is it a little hallmarkish? I hope. We we talk about the Velveeta and the cheese in Hallmark, but there's a part of us that loves it when someone says, wow. And so what I found was these men who walked by, and this surprised me. It surprised me so much. I will tell you, here I am trying to figure out how to get this thing to hang up. One is just get it moved there, okay? There's no way to really pick it up. It's just a razor blade at every angle. So I had to wrap it in canvas. And it came shipped to me, the wire, when I got it, shipped in old wallpaper. (laughs) I'm thinking, what? Who thought of this? Old vinyl wallpaper over and over and over around it so you could handle it. I had to wear a special rubberized gloves. I tried these metal gloves and the, the little razor points would pick the wires out of the metal. So I found a rubber glove that I could get close enough if I kept my hands flat. I couldn't ever pinch in on it like this. It was fascinating. It took me a, a, a lot longer than I thought to get it to coil and wrap around this crown. I wanted it to be a crown. Lots of reasons. We're in Charlotte. There's a crown. There's a light in a crown. There, there's just all these analogies to that too. So anyway, so that gives you an idea of what I've been working on. And uh, so I spent about four days building that thing. And, and uh, I could have bent those thin little brace wires. It had to be light enough to hang. So I'm getting ready to hang it up. Here's the surprise. And the guys came in for lunch. Uh, some guys uh, that I wasn't working with. I was working with guys on the outside. But I came in, in the side. They came in to help. Um, have some lunch and they all walk past this and they immediately see the razor wire and I'd turn it on and they would go (gasps) and a couple of them couldn't get it but some said oh I get it and one stopped and told me a story anyway so I don't want to uh, take you down that road too far but that's kind of how my life is sometimes Um, uh, (laughs) we all know you aren't wired right machine they're certainly brilliant (laughs) Uh, where is it now? Where's the chandelier now? Tonight it hangs in a banquet hall that uh, there will be a fundraiser of 300 people uh, at this correctional facility that's going to turn into the trade school, five and two trade school. And so uh, my friends have bought this prison that's empty now. There's a correctional facility over on one side. Then on the other side, there's this now prison that's kind of defunct. It has a pretty cool campus. Believe it or not, the buildings were built a little differently. And so some of them will be have to be probably raised, uh, torn down. And then there's be some that can just be reshaped into uh, classrooms, but there's an automotive shop, a welding shop, uh, an, um, a gardening area, culinary um, uh, technology as far as uh, media. And they want, they have a prayer garden and uh, that they're putting together. And so I sent some ideas and said, have the guys build, they want to cross at the end of the prayer garden. I said, fine. They want a little worship chapel, you know? I said, fine, that's perfect. Then, but why don't you have the, the people in the welding shop build that? And then that's part of your social media story. So I kind of go there as a, just a friend and a consultant, and I'm not afraid to say anything to anybody about anything that's art. You know that, right? Why? Why are you holding back? My job is not to hurt your feelings, but my job is to push you. My job is to say, Adapt, move farther, go, think outside the box, think differently, be differently, okay? That's what your job is too. Did you know that? You have a job. You have a job if you're going to think like an artist to think differently than everybody else. Uh, You don't have to paint like anybody else. Your work doesn't have to be as grand or better or worse or anything else than anybody else's to be judged. It just has to be useful in the context that you use it. Now there 
is a thought for you. And I'm I'm speaking to some people this coming week, and um, my whole concept is little bitty things, okay? <laughs> little things, little things, little things, like steps. Very rarely do we jump from zero to uh, 60 <laughs> like that in one step. You're not going to start art, and you're not going to learn art. You're not going to learn art. Um, by learning how to do this all at one time. You're going to learn by saying, I like the way this paper uh, holds my pen. I, I, you know what I mean by holds my pen. I like the way this paper um, looks when, I, when I'm working with it. I like, I like the look of what this does when, there's, when it bleeds. I love that concept. This is just a flare pen, but I love what happens here. So if I just... If I just take that out and I take a big brush and I put water on it and I start to just bleed it in like this, I have to practice to learn that. I can't just do this the first time out. I've learned this over a series of small little steps. And so that's what you do when you start wanting to make a difference somewhere. You just take those little steps. I've got an analogy that I'm using for this group that I'm going to meet this week with, and, and I think it's going to be a fun one for them to go. And I've come up with something that I'm going to put on their desk. Um, or give to them so they can put where is it wherever they work. So there's this little painting that I just did a minute ago while I'm just talking to you. And then look how that works. And okay, you see, that's that's what I want them to think like differently. Little bitty steps. All right. That's what I want you to think like. All right. It's magic. <laughs> love tiny art. Always thinking tiny. I love tiny art too, but I do like big art. I do have in my garage outside, I do have the handle of a paintbrush. Um, that's um, about eight feet tall and it's been turned. It's like an old poster bed post and uh, it's made into a paintbrush. And uh, I used to have it in my office and people would come in and they would go, that is a big paintbrush. And, and next to it, on the wall, took some blue paint, and I just made this massive splash on the wall, and there's blue on the brush, so it looks like somebody just went, and then hung the brush. That was in my old office. And uh, so, you know, everybody went, oh, you just splashed the wall, and you go, yeah, now we're going to make a giant brush up there. To, that looks like we just splashed it, and we left it. It's art. So the actual art tools become the art. If you haven't tried that yet, it's a cool piece of art. All right. Um, I can't see for some reason. I don't know if it's uh, glasses or uh, maybe too much welding in these. I, I actually wear a uh, very protective uh, tools when I weld. So, all right. Okay. Uh, last thing I was going to do today, and I'm probably not going to have time, but uh, I was going to take a giant piece of paper, which I have right here, giant to me anyway, which is uh, this big. And I think I'm going to finish this up. This is brand new stuff. Look at this. I got to take this. Uh, I got to take this paper off. When you get new paper from, uh, this is Kilimanjaro. This is exactly the small like book one I have. Uh, white press, uh, white um, original bright white cold press, 100% rag cotton. Um, there's a little. It's glued on four sides. So this is called a block and not a pad. And then I'm going to take this off. The watercolor sheet just by slipping something under it. There it is, right there. Take this off. What a great piece of paper this is. But I think what I want to do is let's see, let's see if I can get rid of this. What welder has fingernails? Not many. Okay. Right. It has taken me a couple days to kind of get my hands back in shape, and you can see there's still kind of uh, rough. I need some more lotion here in a little bit. What I was going to do with this today, I think, is just take. I need uh, probably some sort of a straight edge. Here's uh, here's one right here. Wait a minute. I shouldn't have done that, but I did. Okay, I just need some sort of straight edge here for a little... Um, I think I'm going to put a pencil edge on here. Leave this up like that right there. That looks pretty close. Let 
if it's going uphill a little bit, that's okay. All right. Um, it's, it, I thought it was the time of year to do a little bit of a Christmas parade. So I'm going to start this today and I'll finish it. But not, I didn't really want to leave it as a Christmas parade. So I'm just going to call it the, the free range parade. I've done several parades over the years and I'm going to block them out like this. So I thought I'd show you how I'm going to do this. Um, uh, So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to need somebody here who's kind of the um, the matron of the, the parade. This big hen who is the mother of all parades. And she's there. It's okay if I come down below this, this line. And uh, she's always pushing um, the kind of the leader of uh, the pack. And he's this person here. It's going to come down, and then there's going to be a cut in here, and then it's going to have a wheel on the outside. I use a lawnmower because everybody knows what a lawnmower looks like. There's one sitting out beside every place. So there's a little bit of a lawnmower. And then here's the big rooster, and he's going to be standing up here on top of the lawnmower. So there's him. I think you can almost see that. I'm just going to start sketching in pen and we'll see what happens here. This is an 05 pen tail. So here we go. All right, there's the hen. We're going to do the hen like this, a little bit of a crown. And then she comes down here. Maybe this foot is out just reaching for the ground a little bit to walk. And this one's backing up this way. She's reaching to walk. And then I'll do the final detail later. She's got one wing coming out here like this on the handles of the lawnmower, which comes down this way. Worry about all these details later, like the little cables and stuff. You see, I just threw one in there. Little Murray mower here, you know. You know what those are, right? Little Murray mowers. Boop, it comes in like this. There's where the... There's the little grass catcher blade. Here's the other wheel. A lot more blades or a lot more wheels are just very simple. And then maybe just this little motor up here like this. This is going to be a little motor here. And then I'm going to actually move this rooster up just a little bit here. See, I'm going to take him down and put him up here just a little higher than he was when I sketched him with the pencil. So see that pencil helped me there a little bit because... Um, bring this down and his feet out this way and then I do think I'm going to bring this foot out this way a little bit because he's going to be my flag barrier or carrier so I'm going to have him put that flag into here and carry it out that way so there's the flag coming in um, then I always do uh, there's got to be a um, great shot at the top of your head yeah oh thank you very much yeah I appreciate that well it always happens somewhere um, hey John Robert Small good to have you on the show man um, thank you for being on board and um, let's uh, let's see. So what we're going to do here is, I think I'm going to also just put a little bit of a uh, somebody here on the front of um, on the front, just another little rider. These are the people who are always around, and and he's probably he's probably got um, a trumpet. And it's, it's one of those trumpets that they blow at the soccer games, you know. It's a, um, So he's got that. Or it could be a bathroom plunger. I don't know. It looks like either one right now. So then I think what I'm going to do here is um, do a little carrier bird like this. Okay. And then here's where my wash tub comes in. Here's the wash tub right here. It's a number three, always a number three, just because it's funny to say number three. And um, there's a little bit of a handle hanging down here. Maybe it's got a, a rope strapped over and it's hanging down here because I'm going to put a little peep underneath here. I painted this before, so I know exactly kind of where I'm going. And maybe this little guy right here is playing a flute. There's a little flute player and he's hanging underneath a little wash tub. And on the wash tub is the queen of the parade. And uh, she is uh, she's another matrion here. And she has a little crown on, like so. See? See? And uh, she has uh, a court. 
There's two or three little peeps. This one is having to ride the parade route backwards the whole time. And this wash tub has some lines on it, so there she comes in. And here's another peep that's carrying her like this. Don't worry about their feet being up in the middle of nowhere right now, because that'll work pretty well when I get there. And then I think what I'll do from there is come out here with a little bit of a, I'm thinking we, we need some more uh, horns, but let's, let's do this. Let's, let's, uh, let's come in right here on the front of this and put just uh, some plumbing apparatus. Okay. Pipe plumbing is always good ways to get other people to stand up elbows and valves, things like that. I can paint that in. And here's, here's a little peep up here. And he's a, he's a trombone player. I love trombones because um, they are the uh, raucous instrument in the, I don't really love to hear them and neither, I don't think there's anybody else, but there's that one, they're very kind of clownish. <laughs> so there's the trombone. I think I'm going to need, um, and these are just poles that are carried, uh, strapped together so you can get the feel of how that's working. Okay, there's another one there. There's in there. Do you see that work? Uh, the funny thing here would be if he's supporting it all, his feet are actually off the ground. That would be kind of humorous. Uh, that'd be kind of funny, actually. Uh, uh, so what we want to do here is maybe get, uh, we need a drummer. So let's put in a bass drum right here. Let's put in a bass drum about right here like this. And then we put in a, a, a roux that plays the bass drum. He comes out and his tail's going back like this. And he's got this thing locked in like so. And I'm not going to finish this today, but you get the feel for where I'm going with it. I think you can understand. So when you do little stories like this, this is why story is so important to my art. And it, it should be important to all art, even if it's a tiny piece or if it's a little little piece, if it's a it's a microscopic piece, there all should be something there. I saw this little thing laying in my book this morning, and there it is. You know, this has become a little uh, Christmas painting for me that just says... Uh, it's a, hey, bub, I got the bub, let's go. And it's it's East Tennessee ling lingo, not bulb, it's bub. Put a bub in it. You know, that's kind of where we are. And so for me, this is, uh, this is the bass drum. I think I need a couple buckets like this uh, over Peep's heads. You wouldn't want this job, though, would you? <laughs> and then another one here, and they're here. And then maybe out on this bass drum, there's a, tiny little peep like this and he's got a drumstick and he's banging on the tops of their heads i i just thought of that okay i think that's kind of funny personally and then of course all parades need what they need they need a color guard yep they got to have somebody out here who has the flag that's just bigger than all flags in the whole wide world and uh, that's that's that color guard right there and uh, it could be this is probably a small american flag um uh, and this is probably the theme of the parade. And so um, there's the foghorn, leghorn looking roux up there leading that. I think there's a place here for a couple bees up here like this who are helping hold the flag up. There's another one there. They're tied in. So I'll finish those. Maybe three bees. Three bees get it. Okay, so there's another bee. He's up here. He's helping fly this in. So they're they're holding up that end of the flag. You can do that when those airplanes fly across the beach. You know, they have all that. So um I think that's kind of where I'm gonna go with that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to piddle with this some and work on it. And uh, we'll see what post I come up with. I think I'm gonna post a crazy little painting today about just be different. And uh, you think about that this Christmas season. You think about just being different. I'm going to come back and finish this probably uh, Sunday afternoon. All right. So. Um, oh, wait. I know how to solve this. Watch this. Look at this. I'm going to put this right here. And then I'm going to put these little springs under it. And I'm going to put wheels on it just like this. So we've got a little. And I'm going to do a little electric battery here. So that's really powering it also. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I, I think what I need to do here is, um, is put another little, um, oh, I've got, I've got a couple more minutes here. I'm going to put a little peep right here. And guess what he's playing? 
the symbols. There we go. Those are little symbols right there. Yeah, symbol player. Need a symbol player. Okay. And I need this trumpet player here, the longhorn player. And I need one more trumpet player. And we'll just let this little guy right here be a trumpet player. Okay, there's a little trumpet going in. All right. And uh, let's see, a flute player down here. Da, 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 da. And uh, on a little swing. All right. So that's going to be the start of my parade. I just have to think as I go and get it all in there. And I'm sure I'll add several other pieces. Like, in fact, I'm just going to add one more right now in a couple minutes left. And here it is right here. This is, oh, I love it. I almost forgot. Look at here it is right here. The drum major is actually um, here. <laughs> and he has his, uh, what is it, scepter? Is that what it is? I think something like that. Yeah. Okay. So there's the drum major. And uh, there's the drum major right there. Now we're getting there. Now we're getting into um, what I'd call, let's see if I can pull this down here. Now we're getting into what I'd call a, uh, a pretty sophisticated little parade going across. And uh, that's going to be fun. Um, all right. So, hey, uh, have a blessed Christmas. I may see some of you um, next Saturday just, uh, just for fun to say hello and uh, just wish you a Merry Christmas. And uh, until then, I wish you blessings. I wish you uh, would think differently. I wish you, uh, I hope that you will cont continue painting and staying behind that mule and uh, making people smile and catch people up with your stories and your life. So uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be on good paper. Oh, no, I'm different. And that's good. I think that's the painting I'm going to post today. Somebody needs this hanging in their kitchen every day. Grateful for you all. Merry Christmas. Uh, reminder, if you're traveling, be safe. If you've got family coming in, love on them like crazy. And um, you are highly favored. Thank you for being a part of Roo Doodles. I am I'm blessed to be a part of you guys. Wow, we're coming into... 24 my gosh uh we will celebrate march of 2024 it'll be four years since i've been doing this online that's a lot of words blessings to you all uh don't forget pen prints uh dot shop we'll uh, i'll post a link for that if you're looking for tea towels they probably they probably won't make it before christmas this year but i'm going to have a whole series of tea towels from those guys and i think you still can get some t-shirts and any of those images um and then also etsy store is open for some prints if you need a quick print those guys can get you a quick print and the paper on the prints honestly I'm so, so pleased with it. Here's to give you an idea. Take a look. And they're even almost a little brighter. This is the original painting that I did. And here's the print. And I we treated it a little darker just so it would pop. And this is beautiful paper. And so it gets shipped to you. That's a five by seven print of what I call the Bar Harbor Blue uh, Lobster. And so that's a print that's available at Etsy. Um, and uh, a toast to you. Blessings. I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. See ya. What is Pen Prince? Pen Prince is uh, it's P E N N Prince. Uh, I'll I'll share the link in, in my regular postings. I can't share it here because of the way it's coming out. Um, I think it's a, a dot shop, and I think you can go to Roo Doodles. Um, you can tag Rudoodles when you get in there. So I think it'll pop up. I think I just tagged it to you. Uh, will you post the light project on Facebook or YouTube? I will. I'll post a little bit later. And, uh, so you can see that and it can be out on YouTube. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, so you can run that thing again. It was a fun thing to build and it was kind of dangerous. I kind of liked it a little bit. All right. Bless you to y'all. I'm out of here. Uh, where's my harmonica? Gotta get it going. Yeah. <laughs>